right and I yes I've been in Zimbabwe and, uh, and I've just come back from there yeah you know the, the economic improvement is largely on paper that's when people are saying that the economy is improving and it's said by politicians largely from ZANU PF but from the common men on the ground things are even much more bad than what they used to be the currency has just eroded and now the rate of the currency which used to be 1 in 100 is now 1 in 65 uh, manufacturing is one of the good things to consider in Zimbabwe because everybody now is thinking of agriculture and everybody is talking agriculture but the moment at which we are agriculture is largely is saturated right now because there is no any form of manufacturing everybody is venturing into agriculture but what I see as my biggest problem, the biggest problem of the country is the buying power. Do people really have the buying power to buy those manufactured pro uh, products? Our ministers who are our political leaders, they are not busy on sourcing markets for us into the world. They are busy on doing politics and doing praise singers and shouting praises. The purpose of a government minister like here where we are in South Africa is to go into the world and source for markets of the manufactured goods of the country and of the agricultural products of the country, which we don't have in Zim. You know, nowadays what's happening is that uh, the, the market is really not stable in Zim. We were doing about 100,000 chickens with Ivans. And uh, if you want to take it into cognizance, the same 100,000 chickens, somewhere around 2015, 2016, in mainly around 2016, 2017, I think they would give me a profit of about 60,000 US dollars. All things being taken care of and being taken cognizance of. But now it's, uh, it's very different now. Why? Because what is happening is that the cost of feed, which we used to get from Ivins at a reasonable price, now that cost of feed has been blown out of proportion feed is now very expensive and uh, even the cost of chicks itself for all information uh, this is what happens on chickens eh? we buy a chick for one US dollar and when you buy a chick for one US dollar because the market is not performing and since the market is not performing we sell our chickens at three dollars when we are like at some point in time three dollars fifty and now out of the three dollars fifty which you sell your chickens at you subtract the cost of the chicken already, which is one dollar. You are left with two dollars fifty, and out of the two dollars fifty, the cost of feed is actually seventy-five percent to eighty percent in the production of chickens. So chicks are only ten percent. So you can actually see that where we used to make a profit around 2017, 2016, of about sixty cents a bed to yeah, of about sixty cents a bed. Now we are making a profit only of about 12 cents a bed, which really doesn't make sense to me, to be honest with you. I mean, on the basis that you would have flown, the time that you would put on site, and, and every moment that you would put. And also Ivan says the off-taker, they are looking for any simple mistake in order for them to maximize their getting out of the production because they pass on every expense which they have to the to the grower they don't even have any expense which they incur so we we had to reduce our chickens now from about 100,000 to about 50,000 because the market is not supporting it the market has been dead people have been in on lockdown for the past four months and no one really has money to buy chickens on the market except a few so so it's really not uh, not lucrative anymore to be honest with you see my point Tendai, which i wanted to say to you is that uh, if the brazilians can capture the whole middle east market because it's very difficult to do chickens in the middle east because of their environment it's always hot temperatures can go up to 45 50 degrees celsius and if brazil managed to penetrate the whole market in the middle east and every country which is in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, and some countries which are in Africa, like Egypt, uh, Ethiopia, they all get their chickens from Brazil. My question is that we are even closer to the Middle East, and we are even closer to some African countries which are there. 
why don't our politicians go there look for the market for our industries or for our agricultural products and 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 when they look for the market for our agricultural pro products because the success of your farmers or the success of your people is also the success of the country and is the increase in the buying power but you discover that i think it's the notion which our politicians had from a long time ago when robert mgabe used to go to any conference and when he used to go to any conference he doesn't even take a single businessman whom he goes with in a plane he takes all ministers who are politicians who are probably all of them and they just go there and listen to him talking and not do anything so so it's that perception of us now which we need to change because being a minister is not to stand and sing praise songs and just do anything it's to look for the market of the local industry and the local production which our ministers need to learn to do yeah a lot and i yes there is a there's a marked improvement on infrastructure eh? which you can see uh, typically when i was coming back i drove a, yes a lot of disturbances on mashingo bait bridge road a, which are happening because they are they are redoing it's an upgrade mashingo bait bridge road let's not be mistaken i hear some of the people saying the new government is doing very well they are doing roads they are doing they are doing it's not a new road it's an upgrade and uh, and people need to understand what do i mean by an upgrade because there's a difference between new infrastructure and actually upgrading the existing infrastructure it's a, it's an upgrade of the existing infrastructure which took them 41 years though to do uh, and, uh, and 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 on that basis yeah we can say that there's a, there's a marked improvement yes they, they are trying they are really trying and uh, if you go on to the airport the airport they they are also expanding the airport it's getting to be a big airport in the model which i want more is actually the model of the arare bait bridge road because it's local zimbabwean contractors who are being used as service providers and then by so doing we are actually making the dollar value circulating to the market is the same market but what's happening at the airport and at the new parliament which is almost about to finish it's all chinese contractors uh, who are doing that now when you bring in a foreign contractor even though if they are funding the project when you bring in a foreign contractor to come and benefit from the local construction and at the same time they are not funding it for free i mean it's, it's debt which has been created for the nation and and when debt has been created for the nation why not using the local contractors as the main contractors other than using the main subcontractors so so that's why i say the level of increase or the level of development on the market yes it's happening to the top man it is happening because at the end of the day when the top man signs deals when the top man does everything it's him who benefits but to the man on the ground now are people who stay in Heathcliff, or in Heathfield, I mean to say, are, are they really benefiting because there is an airport which is being built there? Does a person who comes all the way from Bari cross to come to the airport to say that I'm going there and I'm going to do a day job today because there is a massive construction of almost like 300 million US dollars there? It's not happening. It's just the Chinese contractors for the new airport and the new, they have taken everything. That's not happening. So, so yeah, there is a slight improvement on infrastructure, but it doesn't transcend. It doesn't transcend to the benefit of the men on the ground. Yes, we can talk of accessibility of the main road, which is being upgraded. But what is the common man benefited apart from accessibility? Now, uh, remember, in the chicken production in the country, what normally happens is that um, you are given chicks, and when you are given chicks by these suppliers when you're given chicks you and they give you all the implements like the the feed and the chemicals and then you do everything they give you one day all chicks you grow for them and at the age of about 33 to 35 days you give them as chickens so so what happens with feathers and whatever it's actually Ivan's who take 
the chickens themselves. And when they take the chickens themselves, they, we don't know what they do with feathers. We just grow chickens for them. We don't know what they do with feathers thereafter. Yeah, I think Ivan's monopoly, you saying the truth today, is actually an inhibitor to the competition on the market. At this particular moment, for you to get the license, either to do the HRE or to do, it's very difficult in Zima. So, so if the market can be opened up, I, I think it could be better. And um, if we have funding, agricultural funding, which would happen from the side of the manufacturer side, where people are taking feathers like the other contributor, which, um, which manufacture but diapers, and the way people are, which manufacture diapers, then it will be better under, under that circumstance. But now, it's very difficult because of Ivan's monopoly, because they are everything when it comes to chickens in the market. Yes, you talked about uh, agriculture and you said there's no form of manufacturing. Uh, what sort of manufacturing uh, that could be aligned to agriculture that you can recommend, um, for instance, as Zimbabwe an investor, instead of just going onto the land to farm? What sort of areas, which, which areas would you recommend for someone to go into in terms of value addition, in terms of manufacturing, which are directly linked to agriculture? Yeah, no. Yes, Ivan's uh, uh, Max is really a monopoly. And, uh, and yeah, they, are, they are monopolizing the markets. Uh, the reason why Ivan's is a monopoly, it actually tells you the economic situation of the country. And that since probably 1980, we've got only one major player. We, we can't talk of other minor players like Sare. Those are very minor players. Sare cannot even take a person who is doing even 70,000 right now because they don't have that capacity. So Ivins is the main player and is the major player and they are influencing prices on the market. Why are there barriers? Barriers happen because of the economic development or of the economic advancement on the economy. Our economy is not developing and our economy is not growing. That's why we remain with one player who has a monopoly. Look, I, I've got vast knowledge of infrastructure and, and the projects which do happen. Uh, what mainly happen is that uh, on an upgrade such as we are doing, I'll give you a typical example. On an upgrade such as we are doing right now uh, on Arare Bay Bridge Road, the costing which I would do in South Africa is 1,350,000 per kilometer on such an upgrade. And when it's 1,350,000 per kilometer, what it essentially means is that uh, uh, that road, which we are doing the Harare Bay Bridge Road, a high standard, for our South African standard, whereby you get a life cycle of about 30 years. What it means is that that road, if it was in South Africa, me upgrading that road, it would actually cost me between 850 million rand and 950 million rand. So essentially, what it means is that if I was doing it in South Africa, that road would have costed me at least 80 million in US dollars. But the surprise now, get the surprise. Arara Bay Bridge Road, it's, I think it's costing between 350 and 500 million. Our costing is just out of this world. I really don't know where we get our costing from. And I really do not know which norms and guides where we get our, cost, our costing. And at some point in time, with the level of our costing, you can actually sit down and see that these are people who are trying to fleece the country of the hard-end income of the few taxpayers who are there. Where do they get the, 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 the costing from? Now, let me tell you this. A project of about 500 million US dollars. It's a project of 5 billion rand. And my friend, <laughs> a project of almost 6, 6 billion rand, which is 500 million. It's, it's, it's a wow type of a project. It's a wow type of a road. With that kind of money, if you give me that kind of money, I can develop a highly dualized the three lanes on each side. Jobek, Deben. But look at what we are doing. It's just an upgrade, that road. We're not doing anything much. We're just upgrading to such an extent that if it was me, 
it would not cost more than 150 million US dollars. But here we are. That's our country. Yes, yeah, today in South Africa, we're doing at least about 300,000 chickens, like you're saying. Uh, we're doing it with superior foods. Uh, quite an interesting market and quite a developed market. I'll give you a typical example. Let me give you, we have got a disease, a HR disease, which we call yolk sac. And this yolk sac, it happens because the time when the eggs are in the HR, they might not be well ventilated or air conditioned to maintain the right temperature. So when the, the time when the chicks come out, they come out with some navels, which they have, and they are a bit weak when that happens. And Ivan's has been having that problem quite a lot of late. Big yolk sac issues. But this is what happens with Ivan's. What happens is that if you have yolk sac issues with Ivan's, they tell you that we only compensate you for the mortality of the first seven days. And that mortality of the first seven days, what it means is that uh, your mortality has to be more than 1.5% in the first seven days. If it's less than, we won't compensate you. Here in South Africa, York sake, it's a, it's a cycle disease. What it means is that if you have York sake, you have it for the whole cycle because the bears are weak anyway, they've got a weak frame. But, uh, and they compensate you for the whole cycle if you have that yolk sac. But Ivins doesn't do that. You're only compensated for the first one or two weeks, one for the first one week in actual effect. And now, if your mortality is only more than 1.5%, so what it means is that if I was supposed to have a mortality on my chickens of about, uh, let's say, 0.5%, and I have a mortality of about zero point and i have a mortality of about 1.8 percent is that they only compensate me for 0.3 percent and the other ones they take it and it's negligible he, those are the things uh, which uh, which actually do happen you 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 can actually see that it's it's an unfair uh, advantage to them because they are monopolizing the market it's an uncompetitive advantage to them the, what, what they do and, 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 and it's not fair to the farmers because farmers bear all the risk, they bear all the brood and they will make sure that they will never make loss for anything. This is what happens with IFAS. For any cost which they have, they pass it on to the farmer. And it's the farmer who actually languishes in debt with them. But here, when we grow chickens, it's totally different. Uh, it's different in the sense that the people who do the lab tests and when you take your chickens, your chicks to the lab or your chickens to the lab upon any particular disease is an independent player. And that independent player can actually sanction the off-taker who is probably superior foods or rainbow foods. It's totally different. But what happens with Ivins now is that Ivins is the same player who gives you chicks. They protect their chicks. If there are diseases, you take it to their own laboratory, which will Zimvet. And Zimvet will never talk anything which is more negative about them. When you take it to their own laboratory, you also take it, it's their own HR, whom they try and protect. And now, even if the quality of food or feed comes out poor, there is nothing more you can do because it's them who manufacture feed and give it to you. So there, there's nothing more you can do. So to, to such an extent that it, it's an unfair advantage which happens. That's why a farmer who grows for Ivins will not be successful in any way, but will remain as poor just to get a loaf of bread and move on, which is different. Here in South Africa, you discover that the laboratory, it's an independent player. Somebody else who does the chicks, it's an independent player. Somebody else who assesses what has happened. Are you fairly compensated? It's a state institution, it's an independent player. To such an extent that everybody are obliged to do things which are right by the state institutions. I, I think this answer, um, it's okay, Max, I, I can hear what you are saying, and, uh, and it's very true. But, but, but those barriers, are they really necessary in a market like ours? I'm asking you a question. Now, one thing which I wanna tell you is that those barriers, they are making farmers to be more like slaves of Ivins. I was there and I know exactly what happens 100% for, 
for your own information let me tell you this max if you grow with islands if anything happens you will never ever themselves they will never ever remain with the dead they pass on all the weaknesses all the production fallacies they are passed on to the farmer at the end of the day is the farmer who remains with the with, with the dead even if it's a problem which is theirs like of the yoksek which i have told you they can even acknowledge and write a report that we acknowledge that our air cons have been this our air cons. but when it comes to compensation they don't do that they don't do that when it comes to compensation it's your problem and you will see it on your own so now my question is that with those limited opportunities and limited investment opportunities and and breeders who are limited in the country because of the thara needs is it really necessary when we are making our farmers very poor alo homba you you are saying that which manufacturing is directly linked to agriculture i i personally think that it's very necessary to 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 have feathers which are taken from chickens and uh, and be used to manufacture diapers and uh, and you can also see that the other form of manufacturing which we have is that uh, we we have very few in hatchery providers uh, or, or 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 people who do the commercial hatching of eggs nowadays zimbabwe doesn't have fertilized eggs most of the times we don't have breeders we ordering the fertilized eggs either some are from south africa some from holland and the majority of our, of our fertilized eggs are coming from zambia so if we can have a proper proper hatchery infrastructures where eggs are being hatched and, uh, and at a large scale and at a massive scale i think it can reduce the cost of a chick which i even is doing from 1 us dollar per for instance to even about 50 50 US dollar cents yeah what what affects our economy mainly it's actually the shortage of competition and and there is no that com- whatever whoever is doing it and uh, end up monopolizing the market we have two very big hatcheries in the country which is Ivins and Bukuru and those ones if you go there trying to order chicks or so they are fully booked for the whole year so 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 that's what you need to take into cognizance coming in late i hope you're still on uh fs uh, i just have one quick one when you look at the uh, broiler market and the egg market uh these are basically based on uh, european breeds and you we are talking about the issue of uh, shortage of hatcheries what is the possibility of uh, free range chickens and uh, uh their expansion in the country especially given the fact that uh, most or the majority of our people are communal people i chris uh, no look you have asked me of the of the free range chickens uh, some of them call them road runner uh, uh, chickens and so forth but anyway Uh, it's up to you Chris to do an analysis but this is an analysis which I have done over the years I have actually discovered that uh, free range chickens cannot give you as much return as what the broilers can give you uh, here is the analysis uh, remember a broiler you can actually have it from day one when it is a, a day old chick and when we have it from day 1 when it is a day old chick and then at day 34 it comes out it goes to the market now this is what i have seen with uh, some road runner chickens some road runner chickens now uh, they go to the market most of the times i, I was told that it's about 4 to 6 months if i'm not mistaken and uh, and if you want to check the cost of a of a road runner chicken in the market at the moment let's say you take and you go and sell at mbare it's probably about 15 dollars and the cost of a broiler it's probably about 12 dollars at mbare if you sell it i'm just giving hypothetical figures because they are not so different in any way in terms of the pricing but now this is what happens this is the kill factor for you when you have got your free range or red runner chicken you would have had 
about three cycles of broiler chickens. So out of only one free range of roadrunner chickens, you've got three broiler chickens. And when you've got three broiler chickens, let's take an analysis that a broiler chicken is about $5, which is a true price. And a roadrunner chicken is about $10. So what it means is that uh, uh, by the moment you have about three uh, roadrunner chicken, uh, three uh, broiler chickens, it's actually three by five, that's $15. And there you just have $10. So at the end of the day, if you do your pricing modeling, model correctly, you will discover that uh, when you want to do chickens for commercial purposes, broiler chickens are the way to go than your free range or roadrunner chickens because they actually mature quickly and when they mature quickly, they grow up quickly and you get your return quickly. You actually get three returns for one uh, roadrunner or for one uh, free range chicken. And then, and, then, and then you can see how it is at the end of the day. And, uh, and the roadrunner chickens or free range chickens, what I have actually seen is that they eat as much as what the, 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 the broiler chickens can eat can feed in terms of in terms in, in terms of your feet so 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 now you can do that price mo pricing modeling and you can you can actually sit down and do your calculations quite well and you'll come back to me my second uh, intervention if yes is how possible is it to tackle a monopoly such as uh, that of ivan which has got backward and forward uh, integration where they have links into or interest in feed manufacturing they can also control the market as far as uh, uh, the production costs are concerned and also into the final product in terms of determining uh, the price of the bed at the end of the day which can actually work to the disadvantage of farmers i mean there are times when you find ivins uh, dumping chicken on the market at below cost um, or production cost or ivins can be doing that because they're benefiting in terms of the feed uh, itself or that they have another market uh, outside that of the domestic market where they are actually offloading their beds hi uh, look what is the kurgoi simba it's uh, it's very true that uh, zimbabwean environment is very toxic but we have to do what we can do in that environment and we have to learn to be successful in that environment because a toxic environment is actually a picture of yourself it reflects yourself so what we need in zimbabwe is that we need opposition party which loves their country and an opposition party which is robust in terms of doing things in checking the ruling party helping to craft the policies we, we don't need rational disputation type of politicians. We need robust people who love their country, who are not sucking up to the ruling party because they need some benefits and they need to go to some unit called Pollard where they are going to get cars for free when hospitals do not have ambulances. No, we, we don't need that. We need a robust people who love their country, people who put their nation first, and people who say Zimbabwe is my nation is the only home which I have. I don't have any other home. Despite the differences and the difficulties which are there, I can go there and be successful. So that's what Kuwai Simba, you need to know, that you can be successful in any environment, despite the limitations of that environment. Hope you hear me. Hey, Chris, I, I hear your question. Hey, the only problem which happens is that uh, when there is a monopoly in the market, you you discover that uh, the the grass is the one which suffers, and uh, he, because there, there is no any level of competition, there is no any level of seeing what is happening. He, the purpose of our agricultural industry. Or, or sorry, the purpose of our agricultural ministry is to come in into issues like these ones and protect your farmers. Because farmers are your people. They are not big businesses, you know what? They are not for profiteering, but your economic base is determined by the well-being of your farmers. 
This is where the Minister of Agriculture actually needs to come in. And when they come in in situations like this, to come in and protect your farmers and put in some guidelines and put in some measures so that they can actually deal with this monopoly which is happening. But uh, with our current government, I don't know if, if that has to happen. I don't know if that has to happen. Uh, because, uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, their priority is mainly not on that one. Uh, their priority is not on protecting their own people. Their priority is on something else. I don't know what is, what is something else. But however, in my conclusion to this, if, if there is anybody who can be able to harness some few people and go and sit down with, uh, I heard that Basera is probably part of the team, who is the permanent secretary of agriculture. It's, it's, it, it's his duty. It's the duty of the ministry or of any government. The duty of any government or a ministry is to stand up and protect its people. So, so that's what our Ministry of Agriculture has to do in this instance. I just um, uh, explain a little bit more on your assessment of uh, opposition parties in Zim. Uh, you're saying that they, uh, they don't love their country or they are not robust. Uh, just, just put a little bit more meat uh, into that explanation. Thank you. I saw, I did not say they don't love their country. I was just emphasizing that uh, we need an opposition who love their country. You, you know, where I am here, where I'm based here, I'll give you a typical example of the EFF. E, we have heard several times that for you to be effective, you need at least to have the majority in parliament. I will give you a typical example of our EFF, only 6% in terms of their proportional representation in parliament, but very effective. Do you know that if Malema says, stands up and say anything, the government listens and everybody listens. 90% of the things that he says should happen. They, they really do happen. But the fact that I say no opposition, no, I did not say opposition. I just emphasize to say that uh, our opposition is to love their country. They have to be very robust enough. That's all I say. Ah, th thank you very much for a, a very good um, um, response to quite a few questions. Uh, I've got two questions for you. The, the first one is uh, uh, you made a remark about uh, uh, politicians not going out to help to find markets, which I agree with. I, I've been doing business in the region and uh, our embassies were not helpful at all. Uh, in fact, previously they were designed more for intelligence work than uh, trade. I think the, the first ambassador to help me was when I went to South Sudan. And uh, there was uh, Ambassador Kufachinoza, he was quite helpful actually in, in, in supporting us to get business. My question, first question to you is, uh, but what, what does private sector do on their own to get business? Uh, I doubt that when the pick and pays and all these South Africans coming to Zim, it's because the minister from South Africa came to Zim to negotiate for business. The second question I have for you is around uh, our diasporians. We've got quite a lot of diasporians uh, in South Africa. Um, why can't they go and start businesses in in the region and perhaps repatriate the money home? Uh, assuming that the I look nervous to start businesses in Zim, but I don't see uh, diasporans starting businesses in Malawi, in Zambia, or Botswana, or Tanzania. Uh, they they are quite comfortable to just go to work and earn a salary. Uh, what, what causes that? Uh, and as a result, we end up with foreigners coming to Zim. But, but we, we don't do much to go into the region. In fact, a lot of private sector in Zim, apart from uh, perhaps insurance uh, and, and Bank ABC, uh, we have not done a lot as a country. Uh, I'm talking the very established corporates 
in going out of Zim to get businesses. What's your comment on that? Hey, hello, so uh, let me give you my comment on this one. You, you, you asked me a question to say, uh, what does private sector do? And, uh, and uh, when pick and pay came here, it was really private and there was no minister involvement. But to the contrary, I want to tell you that uh, South Africa supports its own businesses. And the private sector, they really support their private sector companies. I'm going to give you two scenarios with empirical evidence on that nature. Do you know the time of the xenophobic attacks, which happened somewhere around, uh, the latest ones, which happened somewhere around 2014, 15, if I'm not mistaken? Do you know what happened is that Nigeria in actual effect threatened to ban South African companies and they went and they closed all South African companies and they were meeting in parliament the next week in order for them to to cancel the license of MTN. Now this is what happened on that scenario and on that nature. Do you know that the South African president actually boarded a plane and when he boarded a plane to go and talk with the Nigerian president and persuade him not to chase away MTN. That's the highest order of protecting local businesses. There's also one which I want to tell you about, which I was involved with personally. We, we did some roads in DRC, some around 2012, 2013, and we could not be paid for the whole six months. And I went to see President Zuma. And when I was in his office, he picked up a phone and he called President Kabila there and there, complaining that a South African company has come to do work in DRC and they haven't been paid. And within a month, we've been paid. So it's, it's totally different, you know. When South Africa goes, they go as a nation. When pick and pay is wherever they are, they are not wherever they are just for the sake of that they are representing the nation so yeah this is what i'm telling you now that uh, if you want to see how south africa can be and the way they respond touch pick and pay right now touch shop right right now it will come from the highest office to come and actually complain about how their businesses are being kept and some money which is not being paid to them uh, on the diaspora part, so uh, why diasporans are not getting involved in business? There's something else which I think, I think it's our educational system. Eh? And I want to strongly think that our educational system has trained people not to be entrepreneurs, but people have essentially been trained not to, yeah, just to be employees. And you know, also remember our diasporans when they go outside the country, they are not going to be entrepreneurs, they are going to be employees so that they can support the family back home. And for a person who has got that mindset of going to be an employee to support the family back home, for him to think of a business wherever he is, it's very rare. You really can't find that. It's very rare it can happen, but that's at a very limited level. Thank you.